When it comes to hiring, there are five mistakes that we see companies regularly making. And this is small companies all the way up to large companies. Common mistakes, and we just want to walk you through what those are so you can avoid making those and make better hiring decisions. The first mistake is not having a clear job description. This is critical. If you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to find it. And most people go winging it, going, well, we sort of know, we sort of have an idea. Or the job description they put together is vague. This looks like an ad for nothing. Please be careful with it, it's my only copy. And that happens probably more often than not. So you need to take some time and think about what are the tasks you want that that person's gonna need to do? What are they gonna need to be competent at? What's your culture like? And think about things like that so you can build a job description that's actually complete and can help you find the people that are gonna be the best fit for you. It's kind of amazing because that sounds really basic, but a lot of people just don't build clear job descriptions. And that is the very first mistake that people make. So having a clear job description is critical. The second mistake that people make is they forget that they need to hire to culture. Everybody has a culture in their company, whether they know it or not. Culture just happens. It's a whole cultural experience. Question is, do you have a good culture, a bad culture? Is it a good culture and you know it because you've cultivated it? Or is it a bad culture, but you think it's a good culture? When you're interviewing, you need to be able to say, is this person not only do they have the skill set, but are they gonna be a good fit in our company? Because we all have heard stories of people hiring people that were amazing at their skill, but they were tyrants in the company, or they were such a pain in the rear to work with, or they just threw off the culture. And we made those sacrifices because this person was so good at what they did. Well, what we didn't realize until a lot of research came out, and quite frankly, most of us knew down in our hearts, that this was screwing up the entire company and nobody was nearly as productive. So that's mistake number two. People don't look for culture when they're interviewing. The third mistake people make is they don't adapt to the times. It used to be that when you put a job out on Indeed, on LinkedIn, to your network, whatever, you used to get tons and tons of applications. Professional resume. Athletic and special skills resume. And if you're not aware of what's happening with the times and how these days, if you are just putting out that same old boring job description, that same old boring ad, there are not as many people looking for work. So where people used to be getting 100 applications, now they're lucky if they're getting two or three or five. And really sussing through, understanding if you want applications, you need to create job descriptions that really draw people in, that make them want to work for you. One of our clients that has a couple hundred employees said to us recently that we really got spoiled during the good times. And now we really have to go back to the fundamentals of really paying more attention to what do we need to do to actually get more people to apply for the job, to attract more people and to attract more qualified people. It's just a different world right now. And sometimes that means that you're not gonna get as many as you want to choose from. The error there, and this is a kind of a bonus mistake people make, is when you don't get enough applicants, you make the mistake of hiring just to get a warm body. Take the time, it may take longer and in some cases, some of our clients have said it take, it's taken a year to find the right people for the position, but the position was so critical. It was a leadership position, and we just couldn't pick the wrong person. The fourth mistake people make is wasting time looking at unqualified applicants. One of the most valuable resources you have as you lead your company is your time. You're wasting your time! And the last thing you want to be doing is weeding through and wasting time looking at applicants that aren't actually qualified to do the job that you are looking for. So you want to look for ways that you're going to increase that. How do you make a better job application? How do you choose where you're gonna put it better? How do, you, how do you actually get out there and promote that position to get more qualified pieces or qualified applications? You'll wanna watch our deep dive video to find out more in detail of what we do and the several things we do, including the concept of an Easter egg. You'll wanna watch our deep dive video on this entire process of hiring to find out more and all the details we go into in this specific area, including talking about an Easter egg strategy that is guaranteed to get you more qualified applicants. The fifth Fifth and final mistake we're going to talk about today is bad onboarding. Now, mm. you might think to yourself, why are we talking about bad onboarding in a hiring video? That is a million dollar question. Well, the fact of the matter is, when you've gone through all the work of finding a good qualified applicant and getting them through the door, the last thing you want to do is have a bad onboarding experience. So you've made promises, you've had conversations, they've described who they are, you've described who you are. You want them to feel when they first walk through the door on that first Monday morning, as it were, and they sit in at their desk, like they made 
the right decision. So what's a process you can put in place to ensure that their onboarding is smooth? Luckily, you don't have to make those five mistakes because we made a deep dive video based on our formula going through all the details we use personally and we use with our clients to get the best employees for their businesses.